What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. A couple of days ago I released a video on my latest build for the Pyromancer and the latest fastest time that I could complete Boomtown at and uh, shout out to KSIG Kid uh, who put the comment in one of the videos and basically asked the question and I think a very important question and that is that uh, you know how easy or how possible is it to do CT15s uh without a death shield or more importantly without the fortress mod and uh, that is basically what prompted the idea for today's video and the analysis thereof and i think you'll be quite surprised to see what actually came from that so let's run it back quickly and just explain essentially what i would consider to be outriders gun or weapon meta as it was um i don't really know if the, the, this type of game really has a meta but the bottom line is that when we look at these three weapons the animoy death shield and funeral pyre they tend to be the most common denominator you know never mind legendary sets and all of that but the most common denominator in terms of weapon mods on most high level builds or more specifically most builds that are made for really really fast clears of high ct expeditions now more specifically uh, i mean moaning winds from the animoy is really really you know uh, prevalent as well and also extremely powerful and shadow comet is a personal favorite of mine and also quite common but more specifically if we hone in on the death shield and its mod fortress which basically gives you 43 percent additional damage based on uh, the armor bonus that you have or basically how high your armor is stacked and this this damage bonus is applied across the board so it applies this damage bonus to your anomaly damage as well as your weapon damage so it's really powerful as you can tell and this generally means that most people will have this mod on both their primaries or one of their primaries or on their both their primaries and their pistol but it's literally that you know common to see it basically across all builds just as a uh, as a final note just to explain how it works is of course your character gets armor from the five gear pieces that you wear um and that armor usually if you have about let's say 10 to eleven thousand per piece that's going to get you to about between 50 and 55 thousand uh, at about fifty-two thousand, you essentially get the maximum benefit from fortress at least in my analysis that i've seen that is essentially where it peaks and where you get the full 43 percent but if you have less armor you will get a portion of that up until 43 so for argument's sake not to run the math so you're completely but let's say for instance you only have 40 000, uh, uh armor in total you are not going to get the full 43 percent bonus but you'll get a scaled version of that uh, also, what this means is if you stack higher than 52,000, you're never going to get more than 43%. So basically, 43 is the maximum that you can get. Now, personally, for me, the build which I use and uh, with my Pyromancer to do really fast clears, I use the Death Shield, which is this one that you see on the screen here, which has Fortress and Shadow Comet on. And then I use Animoy with Moaning Winds and Fortress on. And I basically, my combo is that I shoot, you know, Shadow Combat the whole time, trying to proc it as much as possible. And as soon as I get close to, you know, enemies, I swap to the Animoy and I hit them with the Moaning Winds and then just reset back to Shadow Combat from the Death Shield again. Never mind all the anomaly power that I'm able to push out with the Pyromancer. This is a very effective combo and that's why it's pretty much used by almost everybody. It's definitely not, it's not something unique to me and not something that you will only see on this channel or in these videos now on the screen right now you'll see the times uh, and this is just me i literally just did this for this test so again i wasn't trying to be hyper sweaty or trying to get the best possible times or anything like that but basically i ran one boom town and one camp plant both with you know my my standard setup which is the animal and the death shield of course boom towns you know gold time limit that you have to beat to get a gold score is six six minutes and 30 seconds Game plan's goal time limit is a bit, you know, easier to hit and it's at 10 minutes and 50 seconds. Now, my time with Death Shield and Fortress on, um, the, the best time that I've managed to get in this run was 3 minutes and 49 seconds, which is really good, but quite far away from the world record, which I believe is in, you know, 2 minutes something. And the overall damage that I had at the end of the run is 145 million. Game plan little bit different a little bit slower five minutes and 41 seconds again with those same weapons and then i was able to get 185 million damage now by the way the footage that is running in the background right now is me actually running with an alternate set of weapons which i'll explain right now 
and to basically show that it is po entirely possible to do ct-15s without fortress and without their shield and in some cases weirdly enough you actually do more damage even though it's just slightly now in the case of chem plant what i ended up using was air to the desert which is an assault rifle with its standard mod sandstorm on it and then for its second mod i slot its shadow combat onto it which is from the funeral pyre and with that i was able to post a time of six minutes and 53 seconds which is yes uh, uh slower than the five minutes and 41 with the death shield fortress combo but still extremely good and beating the gold time by a heck of a lot and with a lot of time to spare and i was actually also able to post slightly more damage at 187 million instead of the 185 and my suspicion is this is due to the the sandstorm itself which actually deals quite a bit of dps if you can drop it on you know the right enemy at the right time or the right clusters of enemies at the right time but nonetheless that weapon worked really well and and that was pretty cool in the case of boomtown i ended up using darkness charmer and darkness charmer has a has a, a innate ability on it called grand opening which is essentially a, the first bullet that comes out of the gun after you shoot it deals a certain amount of damage and i paired that with scrap grenade and uh, basically just created this one shot gun that dumps a lot of damage and then you just reload and you just keep doing it the whole time again and in the case of that, I was able to post a time of 4 minutes and 46 seconds, which again is more than enough to beat the gold time limit. And again, uh, the time or the amount of damage that I was able to do was slightly higher, just 1 million, but still uh, very competitive compared to, you know, the best in slot considered uh, uh, fortress or death shield. So the bottom line here is that it is entirely possible and again uh, actually let me take a step back and say that what we have to remember is that weapon choice plays a role but also the mods on your character which legendary set bonuses you have the way that you're playing the character also does factor in and what this analysis does show us the bottom line is that yes weapons are clutch and those mods on those weapons are clutch and if you're trying to be the tippy tippy top and operate within uh, i would say the top two to five percent then you want to have the best in slot items and i still do believe that fortress and death shield is uh definitely qualifies as best in slot so does moaning winds from animoy and so does shadow common but we can clearly see here now that what when the rest of my character is properly set up then it kind of opens up to using different kinds of weapons and you're not pigeonholed into having to use these or if you're one of the unlucky, you know, people that have been playing for 200 to 250 hours and still haven't actually gotten Death Shield to drop, then there are alternatives that are possible for you to look at using just as long as you obviously spend time configuring the rest of your character. What is really true about Fortress and Death Shield is that it is such a clutch uh, 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 mod and, and, and combination that it op often hides flaws in your build elsewhere so because it is so strong you are able to get away with let's say lesser good mods on the rest of your gear and it essentially becomes like a crutch for you to lean on to deal more damage and that is i think probably the reason why it is such a sought after thing however i do i i do like the fact that that it seems that you do have other options to use there are other things that you can resort to using within the game and you're not pigeonholed into using death shield like i said and in a way, this makes me happy because I do, however, want to not have to have Death Shield and Fortress on all four of my characters and be able to experiment a little bit, but still be able to complete gold CTs. But hopefully this analysis helped you. I'm going to leave the footage on to conclude until the end of the video so you can see how cute uh, this Darkness Charmer performs with that double, uh, you know, double reload ability that I have on there. I was really surprised at actually how effective it is. And I kind of really like it though, so I might actually end up using that on more characters, especially maybe on my Devastator where I think it'll work really well. But I hope this analysis was interesting for you. Uh, I hope it gives you some, uh, some, some hope in that if you haven't found a Death Shield yet, that there are other options available to you and that you aren't stuck and that you can't progress in the game, that you can't do CT15s without a Death Shield. I would advise you to look into other places where you can improve your build and streamline your mods perhaps on your armor for instance drop a like and a comment down below let me know uh which weapon combinations you use or what's been using for you i'm sure you've got some interesting combinations that you'd like to share as well and consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy analysis like this this is the kind of stuff that i do for outriders and many other games and i'd love to have you 
other than that have a great morning afternoon evening wherever you are and until next video fucking cheers